Hello, 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 or should I say, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Welcome to a very Christmas edition of The Three Count with SP3. For December 24th, 2019, it is Christmas Eve. I am in a festive mood. I even got my collar shirt on, and it's not even the weekend. But I am here to give you all your great wrestling news on Christmas Eve. We're going to be unpacking a lot of news and unwrapping a lot of gifts of new wrestling news for you wrestling fans right here on True Hill Heat's YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about notes coming out of Monday Night Raw last night. We're also going to be talking about a certain New Japan pro wrestler who wants to go after the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. And we're going to wrap things up with a big match announcement for AEW Dynamite coming up on January 8th. So for our first count. With the three count with SP3, we got to talk about Monday Night Raw last night. It was a tape show that was taped last week in Des Moines, Iowa. The biggest note and the biggest uh, news story coming out of it is that Samoa Joe, the uh, current color commentator for Monday Night Raw, was attacked by the Top Heel group, which is now Seth Rollins and the AOP. Uh, Samoa Joe has been teasing this over the last couple of weeks. He's been the one person on commentary being the voice of reason, kind of telling people that we need to uh, watch out for Seth Rollins and the AOP, basically saying that they are thugs, that they've been attacking people, and that we need to watch out about them. He teased it even more at the beginning of Raw after they attacked Kevin Owens, basically telling the people that he's like, I come from bad people, these are not bad people, but these are just straight up thugs, and that we need to attack them before they attack us, and that if we let them tell the story, they it's gonna cause a lot of problems for different people. Uh, at ending the show, they want the AOP wanted to put Rey Mysterio, the United States champion, through the announce table. Samoa Joe said he wasn't going to move and that if he did get up, it wasn't to move, it was to fight. So he decided to fight the AOP. The AOP wanted up beating him up, putting him through the table to end Monday Night Raw. So I think this is teasing that Samoa Joe is going to be for, is going to be joining a group that seems to be of Kevin Owens as well as the United States Champion Rey Mysterio against Seth Rollins and the AOP. I want to say Monday Night Raw did this angle very well. They told a complete story building up to this big angle at the end with Samoa Joe getting attacked. So I love the little details that they added throughout the show, which allowed us to see the story progress all throughout the three hours, ending with Samoa Joe going through the table to end the show. Also of, of note, uh, coming out of the show, coming up next week on Monday Night Raw, the big angle coming up is uh, Bobby Lashley and Lana will finally be getting married. It's a big ratings draw. Usually wrestling ratings always do good in the ratings, especially on Monday Night Raw. So WWE is trying to get a big rating to end off the year. Uh, I'm pretty sure... This might be a spoiler alert. I'm not I'm not like Romeo. I don't have Kate Miss picks, but my predictions are very good. And I'm going to predict that Raw does a rating of 2 million or possibly lower for last night's show. was a tape show. Uh, they did a lot of sound sweetening throughout the show. Also of note, uh, Becky Lynch challenged Asuka to a Raw Women's Championship match. Becky Lynch has been looking to repay the debt that Asuka gave her by defeating her at the Raw Rumble in 2019. He, she wants to verse her and it seems like they're going to be versing on the one year anniversary of their first matchup at the Royal Rumble 2020 in Houston, Texas, this time for the Raw Women's Championship after Asuka defeated her with the SmackDown Women's Championship on the line. So that's a lot of the notes coming out of Monday Night Raw. Uh, definitely, we got to stay tuned to what's going on with Samoa Joe and how that story progresses and all the other notes coming out of Monday Night Raw. So for our second count, with the three count with SP3, we got to talk about Hiroshi Tadahashi, the ace of New Japan. Um, it was most recently at a press conference for New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom. He talked about his upcoming matchup, his highly anticipated match against uh, AEW World Champion La Champion Chris Jericho. 
uh, Hirochi Tadarashi had a very interesting comment to talk about. He said that with the possibility of him defeating Jericho on January 5th in the Tokyo Dome at Wrestle Kingdom, he says that if he does defeat Chris Jericho on January 5th, he will be asking the, the forbidden question to New Japan uh, management and that he will be asking for an AEW World Championship match if he is able to defeat Chris Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom. It's very uh, interesting that Hiroshi Tanahashi came out and said this. A lot of people have speculated that he wouldn't have said this unless he did talk to uh, New Japan management and they did say that it was okay or that they, it was something that they were leading into and that a lot of times in New Japan, they don't foreshadow or tease something unless there is something to come unless they're teasing something that is a possibility of actually happening. So to say is that quote, isn't he the champion over there? If I win and Jericho axes for one more match, I think I should be able to get a title shot. That would open a door that hasn't been opened yet. Basically talking about the partnership between New Japan Pro Wrestling and All Elite Wrestling, which has been a highly, highly, Highly requested thing by most professional wrestling fans ever since the formation of All Elite Wrestling. I think that is big that Hiroshi Tanahashi, someone who represents the simplicity and the traditions of New Japan, was the person that came out and said this. And I think that is something that we're going to have to keep our eyes on right here on the three count of what's to come. I am now hoping that Hiroshi Tanahashi does defeat Chris Jericho on January 5th at Wrestle Kingdom. Me, myself as well, I know that Chris Jericho is a very smart businessman and knows the wrestling business very well. And I don't think that he would even consider a loss to Hiroshi Tanahashi unless it was leading to something even bigger down the line, possibly with the AEW Championship on the line. So I'm very much looking forward to Wrestle Kingdom and very much looking forward to the result of this matchup because it can uh, have a, ri a ripple effect for the rest of 2020. And finally, for our third count with the three count with SP3, we got to talk about a huge matchup coming up on AEW Dynamite. AEW Dynamite this week for Christmas will be more or less a highlight show for the rest of the year. This was the formation year of uh, All Elite Wrestling, so it was a huge year. Uh, they had a bunch of big shows with AEW Double or Nothing, AEW All Out, AEW, AEW Full Gear, a couple of the uh, specials they had like Fighter Fest as well as Fight for the Fallen, and of course all these weeks of AEW Dynamite. Although it's been uh, not that many shows this year, it has been a huge impact that AEW has uh, felt on the professional wrestling world. So I'm very much looking forward to what they uh, include in their highlight special for their Christmas edition of T on TNT for AEW Dynamite. Following that, next week on January 1st, they will be in Jacksonville, Florida for a huge show. Already uh, talked about for that show is a, a rematch between Cody Rhodes and Darby Allin. That's going to be huge. MJF is going to be giving us his stipulations for his matchup against uh, Cody Rhodes, as well as Chris Jericho has invited John Moxley into the inner circle. So we will find out the answer to that question. Now, coming up on January 8th, January 8th had been considered kind of like the midweek because January 1st is a big show with the homecoming in Jacksonville and all the big stuff that they've already talked about. Uh, January 15th is the big uh, Bash at the Beach episode, which kicks off the Jericho Cruise, which following week on the 22nd is going to have a tape show that's going to be taking place on the Jera Cruise. So a huge couple of weeks in January, but January 8th had been considered the week where AEW would probably be setting up for the uh, Bash at the Beach show. But no, no, no. AEW doesn't take weeks off, apparently. January 8th uh, is going to be in Mississippi and just named a first time ever matchup. Brothers versus Brothers. Two tag teams that have a lot, of, a lot of history from different organizations will finally meet for the first time ever as it's going to be the Rose Brothers. Cody and Dustin Rose going up against Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix, the Lucha Bros. 
I am very much looking forward to this matchup. The Brotherhood, the Rose Brothers, had a, had a really good matchup against the Young Bucks back at Fight for the Fallen in the summer. Uh, they haven't teamed up together since then, so this will be their first, their first tag team matchup since their uh, introductory tag team match against the Young Bucks at Fight for the Fallen. But if they couldn't have chose a better tag team for them the verse. The Lucha Bros have been the best tag team, in my opinion, in 2019. They've had great matches in Mexico with AAA. They've had great matches in Impact Wrestling, as well as already in All Elite Wrestling. And this will just add on to their list of classic matchups that they've had in All Elite. Also, Cody, when introducing this matchup on Twitter, he did mention that the records for All Elite Wrestling will be reset in January. Me, myself, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to just put it out there. I don't think that that's a smart decision. I feel like it's too soon in the history of All Elite Wrestling for them to be resetting the records. But this is a decision on their part. It probably will help to reset the records for people like the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega who haven't exactly gotten the best start in their All Elite Wrestling careers. And it's been something that a lot of people have been talking about over the last couple of weeks considering the struggles that All Elite Wrestling have been experiencing. I myself felt like they did too much to put over other people and they haven't been really focusing on establishing the fact that you have so many new fans to your product and you have to make the guys like the Young Bucks, guys like Kenny Omega, guys like Hangman Page feel like stars before you create a story of them overcoming adversity. You have to establish that they are a top star, that they get a big number amount of wins, therefore their losses down the road will mean more. And I feel like Kenny Omega especially has not been treated with enough respect and enough star power. He was considered the biggest star in All Elite Wrestling in January. Now coming out of 2019, he feels like four, fifth, six down the line, which he should never, never feel like. Kenny Omega is one of the best wrestlers in the world and he hasn't been treated as such in all elite wrestling so it's time with the new year we're resetting the records that they focus on that as one of their top priorities for 2020 is making kenny omega feel like one of the biggest stars in all elite wrestling but this tag team matchup if it's leaning more to cody being more on the tag team side i would love to see that i think cody and dustin teaming more full-time in 2020 will distract from a lot of the uh, questioning of the stipulation for back at full gear where Cody lost the opportunity to go for the AEW World Heavyweight Champion anymore. If he is more in the tag team scene, more with feuding with Cody, with uh, MJF in the singles, but focusing more on the tag team division and eventually going for the tag team titles, I think it would distract from the fact that he can no longer go for the all AEW World Championship. So that is all the notes coming out of this Christmas Eve 2019 on the three count with SP3. Post your comments down below because I want to hear what you guys have to say. What did you guys think about Monday Night Raw and all the news coming out of there? What did you guys think about Hiroshi Tadahashi put, laying down the challenge that if he's able to defeat Chris Jericho, he wants a shot at the AEW World Championship? And what do you think about the huge matchup for January 8th between the Lucha Bros and the Rose Brothers, the Brotherhood? Post your do comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, push that like button. And of course, push that subscribe button and stay notified to all the great content right here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. We have up right now, Smackdown with the Lynches, which uh, features them actually surprising their boys at the Barclays Center, taking them to the Christmas edition, the pre-Christmas edition of Smackdown Live. And then you can get their review comments mixed in all in a great bunch. It's a great video, great to watch with your families. And it's the Christmas edition of Smackdown with the Lynches. We also have a very special Christmas edition of the Romeo Report. Romo Romeo Cologne is out for the holidays, so Romeo Claus has come and blessed us with his presence right here on our YouTube channel. So enjoy all that great content. There is more great content to come this Christmas week. Ness ST, as well as uh, AEW All Elite Recap with Jimmy and Cash. 
and a brand new going raw with drunk guy JJ, as well as joints and jabronis. So enjoy all the great content from our True Hill Heat YouTube channel. So for me, it is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom SP3, wishing you a very merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy new year. I will be back with you before to end before we end 2019. And this is a very special announcement. I'm gonna be giving you my very special top 10 matches of 2019 as my very last video for 2019. So you're gonna get another three count to end this week, as well as over the weekend or weekend update with the three count. But before 2019 ends, you're gonna get the top 10 matches of 2019 according to your True Hill Phenom SP3. So look forward to that. Look forward to more content right here on our YouTube channel. So for me, for all of our great True Hills on our True Hill Heat YouTube channel, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and we will see you very soon.